welcome to Joy of Business Radio, hosted by Joy of Business facilitators from around the world, with special shows from Simone Millicis, the founder and creator of Joy of Business. Are you bored or dissatisfied with your work or business? Joy of Business is an invitation to a completely new way of creating. Did you know your business and job can actually be fun and joyful? If what you are currently doing isn't working for you, listen in to this show full of pragmatic tools from Access Consciousness, which change everything in business, from money to finance, staff, creativity, productivity, communication, and beyond. Joy of Business Radio, weekly on Ohm Times Radio. Hello and welcome. This is Paul Carney here. So I'm an Access Consciousness Joy of Business facilitator. And this week I'm joined by the wonderful Lale Hancock. And we're going to be speaking about the beauty of books. So Lale, great to have you here. Hey, Paul. I'm so excited to be chatting with you about books. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be good fun. It's going to be good fun. And <laughs> it's interesting because... As as society has changed and everything's gone online, people yeah. people perceive that people would stop reading books and that books would become a thing of the past. But there's there's something absolutely beautiful in having a physical book and holding it and being able to read it and experience it. So um when did you first start reading books, Lale, or what was what was your interest? You know, it's so funny. I was on another podcast Um, with Katarina Wellentin talking about books as well. And my love for books started when I was a little kid. I loved reading and was was such a great reader, actually. I started reading around, you know, the age of three. And for me, the books always gave me almost like a new world (laughs) that I got to experience every day. And even though I travel a lot and the amount of time I have to read has altered, it's still one of my favorite things to actually do. Yeah, totally. It, it, it can be beautiful just to sit back and relax and take it easy with a good book and just watch a, watch a, a month disappear. And it's just a, mm-hmm. it's that sense of... Um, having just so much space with it and there's a, there's a saying that when you when you have a book in your pocket it's like having a garden in your pocket so you can just retreat into a, <laughs> a different world and a, a, and explore it yeah oh my god i love that saying is that a, is that an irish saying or <laughs> no it's, well it's, it's one that's used in, in the literary world quite a lot but it's like having yeah. a garden in your pocket so, so that you can actually yeah. just um yeah, explore it and go with it. Because for me, it's quite interesting. When I was 11, I was diagnosed as being a very poor reader. So I had yeah. the reading ability of a, a nine-year-old. So my mum, mm-hmm. in her wisdom, started getting me to read read books to other people. So um, I started reading books to my cousins and started reading like the, the Famous Five and Ina Blyton books. And um, mm-hmm. the... Within a year, I went from having the reading ability of a nine-year-old to having the reading ability of a 13-year-old. And I just, wow. it was something that I, I, I always um, kept going after that. Then I, I still read an awful lot and I, I really enjoy the physical book and just like having, like there's, there's no particular genre as such that I, that I, um, that I stick to, like I'll re- I read a lot of history, a lot of factual history, a lot of f- fictional history, um, all types of books actually. And um, yeah, I, I really love it, I must say. Yeah. What, what, what's your favorite area, Lale, or is there a particular area that really interests you? Well, you know, I want to actually speak a little bit here that we're on the joy of business, right? Radio on Om, talking about the gift of books. I think there's such a, like a, I'd say a lot of points of view that people have that reading kind of got associated while having to be in school and, you know, all the points of views that go into that. 
And yet, like you said, how much the reading contributed to your enhancement of you. And I also see that in reading and also enhancing my life and the business, you know, and um, there's, there's a, there's something about like, it doesn't matter. I love leadership books. I love self-help books. I love empowerment books. I love money books. Like for me, I have such a diverse interest and curiosity, um, which books is one of the ways that I'd like to, you know, enhance it with. Um, But there's also this, like you said, the gift of books. There's something about the energy that's also in the book, almost like in between the words that are written that creates that extra special way of receiving the information, you know, receiving the content, the idea of what the author is sharing, and also like a new world possibilities that the writer invites us to that are not spoken in words. And when earlier you said, you know, having a garden in your pocket, like that is such a great representation of like the books invite us to a new garden every time we read them. So I don't know, got me really excited even talking to you about books. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could, I could hear that. I could hear that. Really, yeah. How, how, how does it get me better? Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it, 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 it's so true, and it's it, it's interesting as well. So um, I suppose we we have to de- de- declare our vested interest. So me, me and Lale are uh, are both involved with the with the traveling bookshop at Access Consciousness. So Access Consciousness have their own um, their own publishing house, and it's called Access Access Consciousness Publishing, and they produce a wide variety of books on a wide variety of topics. So one of those books. Um, was written by Simone Molasses, so the <clears throat> the founder of Joy of Business. And basically, when she said to Gary Douglas that she was going to write a book about the joy of business, he was like, nobody has joy in business. That makes no sense. And he didn't want her to call her, her business that. And it's like, I'm so glad she did because it created yeah. so much more because it was like there was a genuine desire to create joy in the world and to take the the seriousness out of books and 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 to take the serious out of business so that it could actually be fun and like that book uh, was written i don't know 5 or 6 years ago and it's like it's now translated into a huge amount of languages and has traveled all over the world and um There's a whole group of facilitators now who facilitate classes. So it's incredible what one book can create because it was kind of from a germ of an idea in Simone's mind that all of a sudden became something that became a creation that next thing now there's facilitator training, there's trainings all over the world, there's classes all over the world. And it's it's quite incredible to think how that book created so much. Yeah. And, you know, what I love about it is that it's such a different book. Like, you know, um, I was an executive in many different industries, and we would all talk. Like, we have to keep up with the industry and know what other people are doing. And, you know, from a business perspective, it was always like you're reading, you know, certain type of books. And this Joy Business is nothing like any book I've ever read before. It's there to empower you and your staff. It doesn't matter what your background is. I can have a 12-year-old or a 10-year-old read this book and actually gain tools that are pragmatic. They can use today. They can use tomorrow. They can use it to start a business. They can use it to actually get better grades in school. Like It's this multifaceted book that's there to enhance your way of adding more to your life and living and business. And sometimes, I think a lot, a lot of times, not sometimes, people write a book with so much expectation of they have the perfect formula to fix the problem, that the book is really more focused towards that and not leaving a lot of room for the reader to create their own variation 
of what that might be for themselves. And this book, it opens it to give you options, gives you stories so that you have something to connect to, but it's not there to put you in a box that Simone had the best way of creating a business and you should do it her way. And if you follow her model, then you'll get it perfect. It's actually all the ways that we can put in our own selves, our businesses, what aspects works for us, the energies that are required for the staff. Like it's, I don't know, for me, it's like this, um, this book filled with a dance that you could do with your business. Yeah, uh, and, and do with yourself because it, 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 yeah. it's actually a, 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 a great point because a lot of, a lot of business books at present are kind of copy and paste. So this is what yeah. I did, and you need to do the same thing as me. And it's like it's like yeah. paint between the um, paint by numbers, and um, yeah. like that's quite common in the industry at present. And, and what's happened is it's taken a lot of the spontaneity, creativity, and joy out of business because it's become generic and it's become uh, pedestrian. And, um, yeah. and and that's in various different industries around the world. And exactly as you were saying, it's actually asking questions of you. What would be fun for you? What would be joyful for you? And it's like, I, I met a business owner last week. I had a brilliant meeting with him, and uh, he started a new business. He's employing a number of people. He knows nothing about access consciousness, nothing about joy of business, but he just he yeah. completely is joy of business. He he loves business. He loves having fun. He's like a lot of the things he was saying. It was like exactly the same tools. So you don't necessarily have to be a a part of access consciousness to be conscious because we're all conscious and it's actually just linking in with that and access gives you a set of tools that allows you to increase your awareness and increase your ability to, to tap into consciousness but everybody's conscious on some level and it's actually seeing what would work for you because that's the that's the big question as such yeah and you know um you know, when I think of business, so many people like immediately shy away even from the word business. They go into, oh, I don't own my own business. I don't care about that. Or I'm not in business. I'm a mom or I'm an employee somewhere. And, you know, the other piece of this is like Simone really says, if, if you wake up in the morning and you have blood running through your veins, this is the joy of your life. You know, your business is your life. And what I've found is how so many people, just from this one book, because we've done so many book clubs and classes around the world, like people light up and open up and realize they've been in business their whole life and never knew it. <laughs> and then now, how can they use the things that they enjoy waking up to, the things that are these hobbies that they enjoy to also make money, to also create a greater world for everyone else. So, yeah, all let's right. Ex let's I explore that buzzer. more after the, after the break. <laughs> all right. No one needs to have a money problem, especially you. Yeah, did you hear that? You. You have an unlimited and mostly unaccessed capacity to create money and a financial reality that works for you. Simone Millicis has a brand new book. It's called Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. And right now, when you go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com, if you pre-order the book, you'll get a free online course. What if you can create money in ways no one else can? Just go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com to get your copy today. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Aloha, my name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. 
I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome forward to Joy of Business um, on radio. I'm here. My name is Lale Hancock. I'm one of the certified facilitators, and I'm here with my friend, certified facilitator of Joy of Business. We have Paul Kearney. How are you, Paul? <laughs> yeah, doing good. I'm, I'm enjoying this call. I'm enjoying this call. <laughs> so Paul and I have actually a lot of similar background in the corporate world and um, both of us found joy of business in the last few years and have been having a hell of a lot of fun and uh, both of us actually have this love and desire with books and ways that we can empower even more people um, with books and so today we were like you know there's so many topics that we can cover on this radio show but like what if we actually talk about the books? And uh, right before the commercial, we were chatting about the Joy of Business book and truly the uniqueness of this book and um, and the different ways that I've seen and heard of all the ways that, you know, it's opened up people's um, world to actually celebrate having a business, even if they don't own it themselves, and really have that business of life that they're making greater for themselves and for others. So, Paul, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, you know, when you think about the books, like, is there a particular book that stands out for you um, that's really made a big difference in your life? Yeah, there's um, there's a couple. Um, there's there's one. I, I, I love Gary Douglas's books in particular. Um, I'm yeah. all the a big fan of Gary's, but the um, a book that he, he published last year called A World of Choice, A World of Freedom. It's a relatively yeah. small book, but it's it's such a powerful book. There's there's so oh, many yeah. incredible p- components in it. And oh, yeah. what I really like about Gary is he gets straight to the core of whatever concept he's, he's delivering information on. And um, it's it's just incredible to see um, how he opens up the world of choice and how ultimately it's our choices. So it's everything that we choose today that creates our tomorrow. And it's actually being willing to be that in every moment. And it's being willing to be that level of vulnerability, being willing to be that level of trust, be willing to be that level of honor. And I, I love the book. It's like a pocket rocket. It's a small book yeah. I carry it around in my briefcase, and I'll often Me just too. read it on a plane. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, it's that, there's, there's something that you, you pick out of it, and it's like, wow, just absolute genius. Like, he, he, he hits so many nails bang on the head, and um, <laughs> it's quite, yeah, it's quite incredible. I, I really like that book, yeah. Oh, my God. It's so funny you say that because I, before I travel, I usually am gone a few weeks or six weeks or whatever. And I always ask, like, which book would like to travel with me? And the last six, seven weeks, actually, that was the book that was with me. I traveled to five or six different countries. And like you said, it's one of the most smallest books he's written. But, boy, for every page, there's – a million hidden jewels for each word. <laughs> and so when you read it, I mean, yeah, it seems like simple English, but it's not. 
<laughs> there's just so much energy and so much awareness. And so, like, I'm like, you know, like, even like it, the whole aspect of most of us don't realize we have infinite choices available. And it's the willingness when you're asking questions to do it from that place where you don't already have it all figured out. And, but the moment you are willing to choose, okay, today I am going to choose to be a leader in my life. Today I am going to um, empower my business to grow. Whatever you're choosing, like that moment of that choice is what is the igniting fuel that allows it all to happen. But the gift is that it doesn't happen just for you by that choice you're actually opening all these doors that will also be available for others. And Gary Douglas and Simone Millicis, actually, they just had a um, podcast that came out today, and it was called Contribution. And that's what I love about the books, and that's what I love about asking the questions, is this gifting and receiving that happens simultaneously with no expectations. And that book for me is like, a rocket for creativity. So if you guys haven't had the pleasure of reading it yet, might be one that you may want to look at. Um, you can go to accessconsciousness.com slash shop. Or if you're at one of the access classes, you can come to the traveling bookshops because we do carry it and just see what that might be able to contribute to you. Um, but I have found I don't even have to open the book. <laughs> I can just hold it and then I come up with 10 different ideas, you know? So it's just one of those kinds of books. Yeah, <clears throat> totally. There's a, there's another um, English writer, um, Ken, Ken Follett, who, who I really enjoy <laughs> as well. He's, he's written some brilliant, brilliant books. Um, yeah. One of them is uh, Pillars of the Earth and it's, it's about mm. the bu- bu- building of a cathedral over like maybe four or five lifetimes and follows four four or five different families. And it's quite mm. incredible how um, a book can have a sense of timelessness about it and, like, all the emotions, all the feelings, everything that people are going through. And it's actually been able to see the beauty of a book and how it can be timeless because he can transport you back to the 1600s when cathedrals were being built and literally they were considered the most amazing creations ever and i i actually saw a piece from from gary recently where he was talking about the renaissance and how that t- that time in in europe between like the 15 1600s was such a time of um enlightenment of excellence innovation where people were looking to to go beyond and that's that's really what Gary and Dane and Simone are looking to create. Is just, it's that continually being in the question of the beauty of creation and being able to to create masterpieces all the time. And that's what I what I I love about a lot of their books is the simplicity of it, but also the timelessness and the beauty and the wisdom. It's it's something for me. It's something really special. Yeah. And I found, like, if there's moments that I, I don't know, maybe lost in a little bit of the craziness of the world or, you know, I have a little um, brain block or whatever you want to call it, um, all I have to do is literally just walk and say, okay, which book? And just be able to open it. And it doesn't matter what page it is, but it always seems to be the exact page I need it. They gave me that nugget of information or awareness that opened the flood streams of creativity for me. Um, and so I'm wondering, like, for people that are listening to, like, have you considered writing a book? Have you considered, you know, taking the great awareness information that you have and be willing to also share that with others? Because I think sometimes people think it's so far out of reach being an author but it's actually one of the easiest things if you're willing to allow yourself to actually do it <laughs> yeah and also having the the commitment to do it i i i yeah. 
had the pleasure of talking to um, Susanna Mittermeier. So she's a, a, an ACP author in Paris uh, earlier on this year. And she was telling the story where she wrote a book in a, on a train ride, which was like an hour and 20 minutes. And she wrote the whole book. And she said she just literally sat down and started writing and didn't stop writing till the end of the train. And it was like that was her her book. And um, it's... Um, mm -hmm. It's incredible when we actually let go of the limitations, open up to what we can achieve and like what is possible for us. And like books is one mode of communication that people predicted yeah. would become outdated that that, that hasn't. That it's, it, it's like, I think that aspect will always be there. And um, a fascinating um insight is that 75 percent of people will still buy books on personal recommendation so word yeah. of mouth is that strong that it's like yeah. now with like the internet and google and everything you'd expect that like people would just like google or oh, what what's the best books or whatever but it's still word of mouth where somebody's had the the level of enjoyment the level of fun and then they say yeah i really enjoyed this and then that enthusiasm becomes infectious, and then that passes on to the next person who passes on to the next person who passes on to the next person. Um, yeah, because I, I think you, you were featured in a couple of books, Lally. I, I, I'd be really interested to hear about that. Yeah, yeah. It's been fun. It's funny, like you said, the whole commitment thing to the books. I started two or three books like 10 years ago and never finished them. And um, a few years ago, personally, I did write a children's story, too, that actually is going to get published in the next few months as well that I'm looking forward to. But it was the same thing. Like, like Susanna, like, I was on an airplane, and I wrote 10 children's stories all flying long distance. And it's like that moment when you just have an idea. What if it's not even about the book, but you just follow it? Just follow it. Write it down. Record it if you don't like writing and see where it wants to go. And it may not be for that moment. Like my book, I wrote it a few years ago, and it kind of got stuck in my illustrator's world. Um, but I just realized the timing just wasn't there yet for it to come out. So, you know, just to have that in people's awareness too as they're listening to this. And then, yes, I, it's so funny. I, um, I want to say I'm one of the luckiest people in the world. I, um, I received a phone call um, from a publisher, um, I think it was last year, and, um, oh, I'll tell you more, it sounds like we're about to go into our next commercial, thank you for being here with Joy Business, and we'll be right back. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Putting the fun back in business. Wake up. Go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed, repeat. Business, work, your job, hate it, bored, want to leave it? Or business, work, your job, fun, play, joy, fun. 
Which would you like to choose? You may not know this, but business, your job, work can actually be fun. Check up your business routine. Check out my three-part free video series on putting the fun back in business. Go to accessjoebusiness.com forward slash fun and put the fun back in business. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello and welcome back. This is Paul Carney here with the lovely Lally Hancock. And uh, we're having a fascinating conversation on the uh, the beauty and joy of books. And uh, Lally, before the break, you were just telling us about um, a book that you were featured in. And I, 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 I'm yeah. curious. I'm fascinated to hear. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Um, the book is actually called America's Leading Ladies. Um and it says, who positively impact our world. Stories of courage, challenge, and triumph. And um, I got a call last year from this publisher and um, what they were looking to create. And it was, it, was, it was so honoring to see that, you know, they chose 50 people in America who've been um, leaders. And they're all women, obviously, leading ladies. But looking at it from a very different perspective, like looking at it from more of the oneness of what they're creating in the world and ways that they're empowering people. And I have to say, of course, um, you know, the things that I've done over the years, over 30 years in business, um, was what brought me there. But I love the spin of how they're doing it. Um, so I get to share this book with 50, 49 other amazing leaders in, in, in America. One of them is actually the CEO of IBM, um, Ginny Ramadi. And we also have Miss Oprah Winfrey, who's one of them as well. And Melanie Gates, as you all know, Bill Gates' wife, and so many other incredible women. And uh, we're so excited. The book came in ebook first, and the physical book has arrived. And our huge book launch is actually happening March 1st in Florida next year. Um, but one of the things that I truly enjoyed about it is that as they were looking to feature each of us, they really were looking at not what you say you're going to do, but truly what you did how it affected people, and how it was different. And it really gave me, I think, very similar values as Joy Business, like really doing business different, not being just a leader who is there to talk and there to think they have all the ideas, but really to include and empower people of all levels include people and what they're doing in the communities and really look at where we are today and where we're going for the future. Because I think a lot of times leaders are looking at today, they're looking at the next year, next five years, but most people aren't looking 50 years, 100 years, and 500 years. And that was really more of the aim of this book, of how can we make sure that way beyond us being here, this book can still empower others. Wow, sounds incredible, Lala. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Uh, 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 and what what was your what was your chapter on? Um, being the leader of today and tomorrow. <laughs> that was my. Chapter. Oh, cool. Uh, oh, you you, um, you nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know I phrased it a little differently than that, but that's really what it was, and I think so many of us like. Like one of the things about Joy of Business really opened my eyes to is that I realized I've always had this gut instinct, you know. Now I know it's called awareness. I was just aware of the business who's talking to me or, you know, being aware of, hey, we need to move this person, you know, the, the position's shifting, changing, or I need to do something different here, or I need to empower others to start looking at not just how do we maintain things, but okay, what else would we have to add? What else would we have to change so that whatever we're creating can still thrive? And with the Joy Business Tools, I now have words 
for what I used to think was just my gut instinct. And it really put it from a different perspective, using the Joy Business Tools to actually write and be part of this book. And I do talk about Joy Business in there as well, so that if people are curious and wanting to learn more about it, can also look up Joy Business. Um, but I think so often we, it's so easy for us to get lost in the stress and the overwhelm and the other things that happen. And as leaders, we do such a great job hiding it from others, but yet experience it ourselves. And it's just been beautiful to just keep looking at ways we truly can add to our lives, which then adds to other people's lives too. Yeah, and it's been, for me as a friend, it's been great to see you like fully embody that and be that and, mm -hmm. and do that in the world, um, which is yeah very inspiring. And Gary Douglas had a definition of a leader that they're willing to go wherever they have to go, whether anybody follows or not. And a lot of the time in this reality, it's painted that the leader tells everyone else where to go, but he's willing to go just by himself. And it's like, it's like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And it's like, he knows it creates greater for the future and being willing to be that leader every day. And it's like, so often we're looking to the church or religion or political leaders to tell us what to do rather than actually, as you say, trusting our own gut or trusting our own awareness, trusting our own intuition and knowing this is what works for me. I'm going to go there. And it's, um, yeah, it's quite fascinating. And, uh, what a, what a lineup of people to be involved with. Yeah. It's uh, quite an incredible list. Yeah. And the list is actually bigger than that. <laughs> I just gave you just a few, but it is, and, and, you know, the encouraging part with it and just like interacting with them all, cause I don't know most of them, but like seeing how they all have come together to contribute to this book and um, like what each person has been willing to commit to in assisting and moving the book forward to has been beautiful to watch. Cause a lot of times leaders, they're used to everyone else doing things for them. And so it's like, you know, they just kind of want to show up somewhere, you know, hope that everything's already done. And it's been really cool to see how people have been engaging and wanting to have a lending hand with people and, you know, people who've had difficult, like, it's just been beautiful to watch that it's not a bunch of people telling you what you want to hear in a book. They're actually representing and being that. Um, which I have to say, I meet a lot of people in the world and, um, and I'd say a lot of leaders I've met in the past, you know, some of them had that, but most of them didn't. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a new revolution yeah. of leaders that are coming out, I think. Yeah. And it, 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 it's, it's so true because, um, <clears throat> it's interesting. There's, um, an entrepreneur in Ireland called, um, Nora Casey, and she was speaking at an event that I was speaking at recently, and she was saying she had delivered a speech which was around following your own goals, believing in what you want to believe in, doing what's important for you, and she delivered it to her company, and what happened was the next day, two of her senior members of staff, like her real senior members of staff, said, Nora, your speech was brilliant. I completely agree with what you're saying. Life is too short not to follow your dreams, so I'm quitting. And uh, mm. so she had a day or two where she was, oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe it. And then, and like, how, do, how does it get any better than that? Where they, two of your senior members yeah. of staff, and then she realized, wow, like, if I'm actually being true to what I'm saying, and it's like, and yeah. that's true for them, then I have to be able to let them go. And it was like, yeah. it was, she was honoring of what she was saying and being that and saying, yeah, look, if that's what you want to do, go for it and do it. I'll support it in every way you can. And it's, it's that level of vulnerability and being true to yourself and actually saying, yeah, this really matters to me. And I believe it. And actually walking the talk as such like, yeah. You know, it's so interesting because I realized, like, that's been my leadership style my whole life, you know. Um, it was always 
keep bringing people in. You know, I always could, I, back then I would say I could see, you know, um, um, like I could, I could feel the possibilities of what people could actually do. <laughs> and um, it wasn't what was on the paper. It wasn't what they even thought of themselves, but you knew they had so much greater potential than they realized. And, um, and people thought I was weird that I was like, no, every single person should be able to do my job. You know what I mean? Like anyone who has the desire and the interest, it's not that I'm here and it's just me. You have to be willing to continuously at all levels, be, be willing to empower them to be their greatest that they can be, that they're choosing to be. You know, you can't force someone to choose something. They're not going to do it. But that's where we're going to be able to create great leaders because you're going to be that invitation that, you know what? Hey, what I'm here, you can be that too if you ever want it to be. You don't want to, you don't have to. But, you know, most people aren't really thinking of of um, making sure that there's every level is being looked and groomed and taken care of. Most people are like, okay, do I have someone who will take over for me if I'm no longer CEO or something like that? It happens at the whole organization level, not at just one level. And it starts yeah, with so you I, being that honesty, you know? Yeah, and I, I love what you were saying earlier in the show about thinking about 500 years and 100 years. Yeah. And it's like, because <clears throat> it's what can we actually create that 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 creates more ultimately and, and, and continues to grow and continues to develop and continues to, to create more in every aspect. Yeah, exactly. I um so I have a program um with Access. It's called Leaders of Tomorrow. And it includes people who are leaders today, but it's really about what do you need to be and do different today to continue to be a leader for tomorrow. You know, it's an ever changing world. And the program starts um with kids at the age of eight. I combine adults and kids together, CEOs and others, and it's such a beautiful thing to watch. And one of the things that I found actually when I was putting my program together is that 12-year-olds are one of the largest age groups of small businesses in America. So when you see small and medium-sized businesses were really what helped support us in my, you know, 2008 and all the, the dot-com era that bombed and all that things that happened, it's actually funny. It was the small businesses and the medium-sized businesses that kept you know, the the economy moving forward. And out of that, the largest group was 12-year-old children and women-owned businesses. So, I don't know, it's kind of cute when I think of 12-year-olds who truly are leaders and what else can they create, you know? Um, so, I guess we're right back to our show um, in just a few minutes after this short break. What do you hate about business and do you want to change it? If you don't want to change anything about your job or business, stop listening. You're all good. If you'd like to have money just for the fun of it and stop the negative self-talk, check out Joy of Business. This is about knowing what you know about business and creating more than you can imagine. Access Joy of Business 101 classes offered around the world. Go to accessjoybusiness.com forward slash 101. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. 
Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome forward to Joy of Business Om Time Radio. This is Lale Hancock and I'm here with my friend Paul Kearney. Paul, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you today. And, you know, with Joy Business, we do so many different things with businesses. I would love to share. I know you recently did some work um, with a business in Ireland. Um, I'm just wondering, would you like to share a little bit? Because I think when people think of Joy of Business, um, they're not really always sure what we do other than the um, business done different classes and we have a business and money class besides the classes. Like what are some things that you're involved with and doing that might be of interest to our listeners? Yeah, no, th- thanks a million, Lally. It's, um, I, I do a lot of consultancy with businesses and it's, mm-hmm. it's looking at the business from a very much a holistic point of view in terms of what's happening with the business, where the business is, and what's required. And one of the things that we found really helpful is bringing bars into business. So bars is a therapy that's offered by Access Consciousness, and it's gently touching 32 points of the head that link into uh, happiness, sadness, creativity, joy, various different places where we have strong points of view. And as the body and mind relaxes, it just dissipates a lot of the limitations. And, excuse me, one of the feedbacks that we had from uh, one of the managing directors of one of the companies that we were working with, we came in and we did bars in the afternoon with her staff, and there was around 20 people there. And uh, we ran bars, we even got taster bars, just 20 minutes. And... I rang her the next day and said, oh, how are people? And she said, oh, my God. She said, they were so relaxed. But we got more done in that hour and a half than we do in two days. She said, because everybody was more relaxed, they were happier. But also, there was a mental clarity in terms of what was required. So there's a lot of things where they were kind of getting distracted or getting lost. And they were like, okay, this is not required. This is not required. This is not required. And it was straight to the core in terms of what were the important things to get done and it made such a difference to their business because then people started looking at it and said wow I'm an individual you're an individual we all have different needs we all have different requirements and what I what I love with businesses is looking and one, one, one of the simple questions is what does my business require today and it's actually staying in the question of what does my business require today? And it's like usually something will pop into your mind and it's actually following that and saying it's that simple. It's like a lot of time we think we have to overthink it and make things really complicated. And what I say is follow the simplicity. So follow what's easy, follow what's joyful. And it's that sense of lightness that that that's that's what I follow. As a consultant, I'm going in and I'm looking for the things that make them happier, make them more joyful, brings more laughter. And that leads to a more productive work environment. It leads to a more cohesive work environment. It leads to a more creative work environment. And it's actually looking at that and saying, okay, that is the joy of business. It's like the joy of business is not rocket science. It's just a set of tools that allows you to be happier. And it's like when you become happier, you become more productive and more creative. And that's what I love to do and re- really enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. One, it's so funny. I, um, <clears throat> I worked with a not-for-profit for uh, about three years on different projects. And, um, you know, as a, a re- uh, religious-based 
not for profit. And you would think, you know, they have sermon on Wednesdays at noon. It must be the the place where everyone's so happy, right? They come, they come to work happy, and they leave happy. And it was one of the most uh, interesting, unhappy places on the, on the planet. And it really started from us bringing everyone together. And we created what was called the mission team. And it really was representation from the different organizations. They had 32 programs in three states in America. And um, even though they had the same program in a different state, they did it totally different. The regulations of each state was different. And what we really found is exactly what you just said. Most don't even realize they're polluting the work environment. They're creating distractions and not creating an environment that invites people to step up and have a voice. You know what I mean? And um, back then, I didn't have bars to, to share with them. But one of the things that we found is, you know, like you said earlier, that whole honoring and trust and the gratitude and, and those, those elements really played a key in bringing everyone together. And when we first got together, it really was like, okay, you're not my friend. I just have to be sitting in the same room with you. And when the projects had finished, people were hugging each other. It was, it was no longer this, this is my department. This is your department. You know, I'm here to fight for my peace it literally became the oneness of the organization and willing to work with each other to create whatever the other group needed to become successful. Because if one became successful, the whole organization became successful. And I've got to tell you, that's what I have found the tools of joint business do, whether that's in a work environment, personal environment, whatever, you're taking away the the misbelief that people need to be at work and be unhappy. <laughs> they have to hate their job. They're there just for the money. But when they actually take away the level of the stress and they actually start, you know, putting the honor in and some of these other things and the bars, wow, what a gift. I don't I don't know that I ever want to know what my life would be like without it. Um but the level of creativity that also comes with that, wow. And and so, like, I'm wondering, like, sometimes people don't believe it's true. You can't have joy in your work. But what if you would be willing to ask one question? You know, what would I have to change? What one point of view would I have to change to actually enjoy my job again, to actually enjoy getting up and going to work again? Because a lot of times it's a point of view that's not even yours. Or it could be that everyone's upset, therefore you're upset with them. And there's a whole world when you're willing to be what we talked about earlier, that leader that is not going to be there to add the fuel to the fire of the poison of everything's wrong with the organization, but really be that leader and look at, you know what, what can we be different today or what can we do different today that will allow us to actually grow the business? Yeah, so, brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant question, Lale. Brilliant question, yeah. 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 So, Paul, we have a few more minutes left before um, the show comes to end. And I'm wondering, like, well, where are you going to be next around the world? Um, that is a great question. Um, I'm going to be – I'm in Ireland this week, and then I'm off to Rome for an incredible class with Dr. Dane here oh, called what? the Maestro Training. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm going to be involved with the bookshop there, so we're going to have loads of books, and it's going to be loads of fun, Um, and then I'm off to London for a COP with Mr. Gary Douglas, and then I'm off to... I'm off to Venice then for, for a class with Gary and contribution. And actually, oh. this weekend, we're doing a work with a, an accountancy firm where we're, we're, we're running Access Consciousness Bars with them. And um, myself and my partner, Melanie, have a number of foundations coming up in the next couple of months as well. So, uh, yeah, oh. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, um, yeah, really excited about what we're creating and also creating with my friends and saying, hey, what else is possible? What else can we create? Yeah. 
totally, totally. Well, I want to invite everyone. There's business done different all around the world. We have joy business facilitators all around the world. You can go to accessjoybusiness.com. You can find us on social media, Joy of Business. We have these incredible three-day classes. I'm actually so excited. I'm going to Hungary next week on the 13th through the 15th of September. I'm going to be in Budapest doing a business done different, which is also available online. And what I love about Joy Business is our leader, Simone Millis, is, is brilliant. And she changes everything all the time. So the last time I facilitated this class, the manual was totally different. So I'm so looking forward to that. And we have some cool things coming down. We have a whole new program we're going to launch. I can't give you too much information about it, but we're going to have a, a different book that Simone wrote that's going to have a book club coming up. So you may have to just keep coming back to the accessjoybusiness.com website to learn more. Um, and uh, we're super excited about all the different programs that are going to be launched um, in the next few months. So, um, yeah, what else is possible? That's the other question we forgot to talk about is the incredible yeah, what we, else we, is possible. We, we, we'll have to do that in the next show, yeah. That, 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 that's our next <laughs> one, yeah. The what, the what and, else is possible show, yeah. The What Else Is Possible show. And um, one of the things that I also wanted to share is one thing about Simone being the leader of Joy Business is that she is the leader, but a long time ago, she empowered her staff to be leaders and have green lights to do things. And I think if you're listening to this and like, you know, what are those things that you could create for you and your business? that also allow you to empower others. Well, thank you for being here, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Lally. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.